Hello friends, I am officially back from maternity leave and excited to be talking all things Notion and systems with you again. Today's video actually comes as a request from you guys for a full tour of my task list inside of Notion. I realized I haven't actually done a task list tour with you guys yet, so let's dive in, shall we? So something to note when it comes to Notion is that there isn't a built-in task feature. That is something that sometimes throws people for a loop. Notion runs on databases which you get to create and customize. If you are new to databases and you want to learn the ins and outs of creating them in Notion, I have a masterclass that teaches you everything you need to know about databases. And it comes with a workbook that doubles as a resource guide. So if this sounds like something you need, I will leave a link for you in the description box below. So let's go ahead and dive into my task list here. I have a view of both my unfinished tasks and my finished tasks in the master task list. So if anything ever gets lost, I can come back here and find it. I'm going to go ahead and open up one of our tasks here and take a look at all of the different properties that I actually have in my task list. Now I will say my task list is very interconnected with the rest of my Notion setup. So it did take a while for me to get all of these properties in here and actually get it connected into all these different areas. So don't panic if you're like, oh my gosh, this is way too many properties from what I need. It's okay. You can always add what you need and just take inspiration inspiration from mine. So to start us off here, I have fidgeted with the layout a little bit just to clean up all of these different properties and make sure they were neatly organized so I did know what I was looking at. If you are unfamiliar with Notion database layouts, be sure to check out my video on layouts that walks you through how you can set this up yourself too. So up here at the top, I have pinned a couple properties that are really important for me to be able to see right away. One is the category so this is what type of task this is. If I pop this open, I have lots of different options here business, personal, home, cleaning, work, fine. I mean, work and business is probably the same. I probably don't need this one anymore. I don't ever use it. And then finance and travel. I also have one here for destiny because I do have a page all for destiny, the video games, like tasks that I was doing. I have not touched it in a long time. So I probably need to kind of revamp that a little bit too, but it is here for me. The next property I have here is my status property and this tells me where I am in the process of doing this specific task. This is very simple. I have not started in progress and done here. I can actually show this as a checkbox in different areas of my workspace though, which is super nice. So I like to keep it as a status here on the page so I can kind of note where I am in the process of things. But if we go back to my master task list and take a look here, when we take a look at this checkbox and it's in progress, it shows like a little tick mark, which is super nice because it does let me know I am in the process of doing this specific task. And if it's done, it will actually check that one off. So that is pretty nice. Next up, I have my due date and I have this labeled as the DO due date, like the day I'm actually going to be doing it. And there is a little arrow here because I actually have this time blocked on my Notion calendar. So that's why it looks that way. But again, this is just when I'm going to be doing that specific task. So it shows up in different areas of my workspace. Then my last pin property here is who it is assigned to. And this is actually a really important property if you want to use the Notion Home feature, which you can find over here. If you want to use that specific feature, you do have to have a assigned property in your database because it wants to know who the task is assigned to to make sure it shows up in their Notion Home page. I have a video all about how to set up your Notion home. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check out that video. Next up, I have kind of called out my notes property here, and that is just a way for me to be able to see any notes I have about this specific task pretty quickly. So all that means is when I was customizing my layout, I wanted to make sure it was separated from my other properties. And again, that way I could see it pretty quick. So if I have any notes about a specific task, I just put it in here. This is just common 
contacts to help me actually accomplish that task later. Then I have a few toggles here with even more properties inside them. So my first one is the task details. This is the important information about this specific task that really is there to help me give context to the task and also help me make sure that I am not overloading my plate and assigning too many things at one time to myself. So I look at these properties a lot when I am actually doing my time blocking each week, which I have a video all about how I do that using Notion Calendar. Again, check that one out if you're interested in that process, but that explains all of these different properties that I have here. So the first one is my priority. I always prioritize my tasks so I know if it's high, medium, or low priority. Those are my options here, and that helps me know what to focus on first. Then I also have a property called focus, and the option here is between shallow work or deep work. Essentially, this is saying, is this something that is easy for me to do? I don't have to be like super focused when I'm doing it, or is it something that's really going to take a lot of effort and focus for me because I don't want to do too many deep work tasks on one day. I want to try to only do maybe one a day and I can throw a couple extra shallow work tasks on there as well, but that way I'm not overloading my plate as I was talking about before. So this is a big one for me. Uh, when it comes to my cleaning stuff, I don't typically say whether or not it's shallow or deep work because it's just cleaning and you can kind of do other things while you're doing that too. And then my next one is my time commitment. Now I try to be very specific about my time commitment, I will put an actual interval of what I think it's going to take me to do that task. Now, often I underestimate, so I do try to go ahead and overestimate these types of things so that I am not, again, putting too many tasks that are 60 plus minutes, for example, on my day. That would obviously take way too much time each day. I need to be sure that I'm doing maybe one 60 plus minute task and then a couple like 15 minute tasks. Now, now, laundry is kind of a weird one. I have this one as less than 15 minutes, but it's kind of because I can just throw it in the washer and then walk away. So it's kind of one of those things that doesn't take a lot of time. So that's why I have it that way. But it is something I end up usually doing over multiple days. It's not necessarily something that only takes me less than 15 minutes. So it's kind of a weird one in here. Next up is my ideal due date. Now, this is a very special property that I have in my system. And that is so that I can give dates to my task and then not necessarily assign the actual due date, the own due date that I'm going to do it until the week of. So when I do my weekly planning, I like to brain dump all of my thoughts of what I need to do for the next couple of weeks or anything that's in my brain. I just get that out here and then I sort those by date. So I have my top priorities here and then also my someday tasks down here. Now with those, the top priorities is going to show anything that is listed in the next week by my ideal due date here. So that weekly planning page is basically sorted all by my ideal due date. And then when I do my time blocking each week, I actually choose what tasks I'm going to be accomplishing during that week. So that gives me a little bit of a buffer to say, okay, hey, I'd ideally like to do this task at this time frame, but I am also looking at my schedule to see what I can actually accomplish. And that's when I give it the actual due date. So again, it's really just a way for me to sort my tasks out and know what is coming and then prioritize them as the date gets closer. When I share this method with people, some people are like, I don't need that at all. And then other people are like, I absolutely love that. So feel free to steal it if it is something that would help you, but ignore it if not. <laughs> then the last detail for my tasks that I have here is the sort checkbox and that is purely for the brain dump portion. Once I have brain dumped all the tasks I need to do, I just go ahead and press the sort checkbox here and it takes it out of my brain dump section and puts it down into the top priorities or someday section. Moving on to my household products. So 
My task list, again, is used many different ways across my space, and one of those ways is my to-buy list. So I also have a place where I categorize all of my household products to make sure that I am not running low on any stock, and that is actually an extension of my task list. So just to show you what that looks like, here are all of the things that I like to keep in stock in our house, and I just kind of keep a running list to see what I need and when I need to get it. So those couple properties that are in my task list are the household category that just tells me where in the house this thing lives, whether or not I need it now, which is basically like you need to go buy this right now. Next time you go shopping, make sure you grab it. And that's just a simple checkbox so that I can see that in my to buy list, whether or not it's like a high priority or not. And then also the stock. So this is a high, medium, and low situation. The way that works on my household products page is I just kind of keep a running tab of what's going on with my stock. When I have purchased something, I press this button to reset products. And if anything had been purchased during that time, it will reset the stock to high and uncheck that need now checkbox, which is super nice. It makes it a little bit easier on me to not have to manually go in and do that all the time. I do actually have this system, my household product system as a freebie. So if you're interested in it you can grab it in the description below then lastly in my little toggles here as i mentioned before i did have an area for the video game destiny that i was playing i have not played it in quite a while although i have been back to it a little bit and quite honestly it has changed quite a bit so i basically had a place to kind of categorize the tasks that i was doing very original type and subtype, not my greatest naming scheme ever, but I was just using that to help organize things. Now, again, my task list is very interconnected within my Notion workspace. So I have relations to a lot of different areas in my workspace, including my goals, my trips, my content, my projects, any brand partnerships I might be working on, and my seasonal closet as well. Because if I do want to buy things from my closet, that goes in my to buy list which is part of my task list so that's why that's connected there too i do also have that as a freebie if you want to grab that i will link that in the description box as well but this essentially allows me to see specific tasks for my goals for example so i can kind of keep track of my progress and know what i am working on inside of that goal then lastly i have two hidden properties over here in the side panel one is a relation to my finance widget and one to my information display. This just allows my tasks to show up in different areas that I have set up to show what is going on for the day. So for example, in my daily planning page, I have my little overview here, which tells me I have tasks that I need to accomplish or overdo. Don't judge. Newborn life has got me going crazy over here, um, but this will show me those tasks. And in order to have something that reads out my tasks like this, I do need to have it connected to my task list over here via a relation. So that's what's happening. I really don't need to see this, which is why it's hidden in the side panel here. I just got to keep it so I don't have to look at it, but that function is there. So it does need to live somewhere. I do have a video that explains how to create a little notification center for yourself. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. So that is everything that I have in side of my task database. If you like my task database set up, be sure to check out my templates that I have on my website. They actually have my exact system that I use in my personal Notion. So I will link those for you down below. It just doesn't have the destiny part, which is probably okay with you. <laughs> now, if you're looking to create your own custom task manager in Notion, I have a few tips that I want to share with you. First off, be sure to choose properties that are going to work best for you. So for example, inside of my task details here, I use the priority, the focus, and the time commitment to kind of help me decide what it is I'm going to be working on each day. I also do use the category to to make sure that I am spacing out tasks and not doing too many cleaning things all at one time. But all of these properties are things that I have added over time that just helps me as I'm planning 
my tasks for the week and they may be different for you. So be sure to add properties that are going to help you as you are planning inside of Notion. My second tip for you is to make sure you create easy points of entry. So when it comes to adding in things into Notion, it can feel a little bit cumbersome to have to add in every single task that you have, but you can make it a lot easier by setting yourself up for success in this way. I have done this by adding little buttons across my workspace, so it's super easy for me to add in new tasks. I can batch add tasks if I know that there are certain things that I am going to be doing on a recurring interval. I do have a video on how I set up recurring tasks, so you can check that out as well. And then when it comes to my weekly planning, having this brain dump space right here is actually how I made it easy for me to get those tasks in. So I have little buttons that can easily add in a new task for me and then I just fill out a little bit of information about it, sort it, and then there it goes. It's into my system and that is a lot easier than having to go in and add a page individually every single time. So be sure to set up some way that makes it easy for you to get those tasks into Notion. And then lastly, be sure to use Notion to your advantage. There is something called linked views of databases that allow you to show different views of your databases in areas that make sense for you and in ways that you like to see your tasks. So for example, on my Life Hub page, I have a nice little list of things that I need to do for this week specifically, but in different areas of my workspace, like my goals, for example, I was saying that I show my tasks inside my goals. If I pop this open, we're also gonna see the specific tasks related to this goal. That makes it easy for me when I'm going in to take a look at my goals and see what is going on, where I am in the process of, it. So be sure to use that special feature of Notion to your advantage. It's honestly part of what makes Notion so great for this. So there you have it. Hopefully this gave you some tips for creating a task management system in Notion. And if it did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know. If you have any special task list properties that you like to add to your task list, be sure to leave them in the comments below so that we can all get some ideas from each other. In my next video, I'm gonna be going over a brand new feature in Notion called Database Row Permissions, which I am so excited about. That way you know all the details and you can use this feature as efficiently as possible. So be sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you don't miss it. Until then, if you want to see more of my personal Notion setup, be sure to check out my Notion tour here. I will see you in the next one.